All right, hello everyone and uh, welcome back. Starting a little bit later today than usual, just trying out some slightly different times. But how is everyone? Sage Smiles, hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, good, good to have you here, even for you know five minutes. Always to have, always good to have uh, good company to write with. Um, all right, so we left off yesterday with um, everyone in the, uh, well, almost everyone in the shipping container. Um, our guy Sharp, he's lying in bed and uh, he's woken up uh, after having been knocked out uh, from, the, uh, from the fight that he was in. Uh, he wakes up, he finds his ex-wife, who he's been chasing for three years, has, um, you know, is now sitting on top of him. And, um, and basically he wants to know what's going on. So... Uh, let's dive straight into it, um, because uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of yesterday we had that uh, that big cliffhanger almost um, of uh, now we have the ex-wife, we have our protagonist lying in bed, we also have the 18th captain of the Yakuza, Kyori Matsumoto. She came in. Apparently, there's some sort of business deal between Kyori Matsumoto and uh, and Sabrina, and now on top of that. Before we can even delve into that, who comes in? Mizuki Matsumoto. So now we have all four of our principal characters, um, you know, on stage, and really fireworks are, are, are pretty much set to be going off here. So that's what's going on. Um, let's have a look. Let's see what we can do. So, um, okay, so Mizuki Matsumoto is now on the scene. Uh, what's she gonna say? So, uh, she has a different character to everyone. We spoke about this yesterday. Um, you've got to get inside the minds of your characters, especially when you're writing dialogue. Um, so. Let's try something like this. Uh, so it's true. So, probably what's happened is, um, someone has seen, uh, you know, Kyori Matsumoto walking into this shipping container, um, you know, with her bodyguards, and obviously Kyori Matsumoto, she's the, the main captain of the Yakuza, she's the one that everyone sort of fears, uh, and probably someone told Mizuki, I just saw your sister going into that shipping container, what's going on in there? Mizuki now comes in and she wants to know too. So I'm thinking that's probably, you know, that's, that's a simple way of starting this. Um, but let's keep in mind our rules of writing, so, you know, we want to get one page done today and we start every page uh, with a compelling first line. So that's what we need to do. I don't think we've started a first page with actual dialogue if, uh, so far, but um, let's see if we can do that. So my sister, the girl, and this is one of those very kind of, this needs to be a, a very passive aggressive kind of uh, opening uh, from Mizuki, right? She knows She's, all, she's been one step ahead of everyone this whole time throughout the plot. So she knows there is something going on between, um, you know, Sabrina and, uh, and her sister, Kyori. But obviously she doesn't need to say that. She doesn't need to say, come out and say, oh, you're, you're speaking about that thing that I know is going on. She, she's obviously not going to say that. She's going to be, she's going to have fun with it. Uh, it's all going to be in the subtext. So, uh, you know... The girl who, uh, we remember that Kyori Matsumoto was, you know, is a very sort of regal character. She probably doesn't like being around germs, hospitals. She's probably more that way. So I think, um, we'll pull her face, uh, um, and we can also bring in the father every time. Remember the father who Kyori Matsumoto killed, that's, that's that whole backstory, um, Every time our father uh, would cough, you know, is hanging out um, in the medical uh, in the medical tent. Something, you know, something like that. So let's just emphasize that, uh, and let's. So, uh, simple case now of just you want to describe, you know, you you want to describe your characters. Uh, so, so. Uh, Mizuki is wearing probably the same thing that she wore at the dojo. She has that black kimono. That's her sort of signature piece. 
Um, so let's put that on. So the um, she wore her, you know, black kimono, um, and it had that wolf insignia. Insignia. Um, the wolf head. Uh, wolf head. With the wolf head insignia. Okay. Uh, and whereas Kyori Matsumoto is always walking around with her bodyguards, Mizuki Matsumoto, a trained fighter, a very dangerous person, even though she's a captain of the Yakuza, she, she walks around with, you know, on her own. She does not require protection. She is her own protection, you know? So let's, um, let's be sure to say that. She had no bodyguards um, with her, yet she strode... Um, Past the two uh, bodyguards, uh, past the two guys, let's say, I don't want to use the same word twice. Two guys who uh, Kyori had brought, you know, without giving them any notice. Okay, something like that. Um, and uh, there could be a funnier, let's keep her, you know, on the um, offensive, so to speak. So this is what I'm thinking. Forgive me, uh, my lords. Um, I'm just hearkening back to, uh, if we imagine uh, Mizuki Matsumoto, she's walking into, into this tent. She knows that something is going on. And now she's having, you know, she's sort of being passive aggressive, playing with it. She says, oh, forgive me, my lords. I didn't realize... There was another captain's meeting, you know, going on. She was late to the last captain's meeting. We saw that, so we're just going to sort of replay that. Um, I think that would kind of work. Um, you know, it appears um, I'm late to another meeting. And that has, in fact, that in itself has all sorts of subtext because um, we know why she was late to the previous meeting. Um, and we know, uh, you know, we know, we know a number of things uh, that have gone on this in this novel before. So, um, yeah, the reader will read between the lines a lot more than perhaps might even be there. Um, if someone would like, you know, to catch me up on the on the subject at hand. Um, okay, so. Yeah, we can have quite a lot of fun with this. Um, obviously, she's they're not going to tell her what they're speaking about. They're speaking about this ledger uh, that we saw yesterday with the accountancy. Uh, some, some kind of accounts have gone wrong between Sabrina and Kyori. They have their own sort of business deal in the background going on. Very secret, secret. Obviously, they're not just going to um, tell Mizuki, even though it appears now that Mizuki might, might know what's going on anyway. Um... Also, this, I'm just thinking, uh, the subject at hand, let's remember that Mizuki Matsumoto, uh, she only has one hand. Uh, and Kyori Mats and her sister was the one who cut off the other one. So, perhaps there's a, uh, again, even I'm now reading uh, a bit more into the dialogue that, um, that might be there. But let's, let's go with it. Uh, she offered... So maybe she did mean something by this comment, right? Uh, but if, um, but if there was, I'm not sure what. So I'm just gonna get out of this like this. Uh, some, uh, some kind of joke in there. Uh, I didn't get it. Okay, let's let's swing back and forth between, you know, what the characters are doing. Um, didn't look. These sisters hate each other, so let's um, let's make sure we emphasize that. Um, but neither one is afraid of the other. They're both, you know, powerhouses. Um, uh, to a twin sister. What I like, I like the fact that perhaps now, even though that they're twins and they're coming, they're sort of coming together. Kyori Matsumoto is just that little bit taller. Um, because she wears, you know, heels, you know, she, she's dressed in formal business attire. Um, whereas Mizuki Matsumoto, the younger sister, is, you know, having to look up because she doesn't wear 
heels. She wears, you know, fighting, fighting boots. You know, whatever, whatever that they wear with their kimonos. Um, so again, these are these are sort of things like that we can imagine that that moment in the uh, in a movie where the, the camera would just freeze on these two sisters staring each other down. Um, and there's all sorts of you know um, reasons why you'd want to have uh, that sort of uh, you know one character looking down. Klondike Nation, hello, good to see you. Nice to have you back. Um, how are things going? Uh, so yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. All the time when in prose, especially between uh, lines of dialogue, you just it's it's about painting those images in the reader's mind because we don't have a camera. This isn't a movie, but it's uh, there is a projector playing in uh, the the mind of every reader. So albeit, let's say about three inches taller, five inches taller. I don't know. Uh, what do the um, what do the heel wearers in the chat think? Five inches is probably quite big, right, for a, for a pair of heels. Um, yeah, uh, no, things are going great here. Uh, thank you, Klondike Nation. Uh, yeah, things are going good. We are making our way through this uh, uh, powerful scene here um, with all our main characters coming on stage. So let's say about three inches taller. Um, due to her, you know, heels, or stilettos, heels, whatever, call them heels. Um, okay, and we said that yesterday she was holding, she came in, uh, Kyori Matsumoto, holding the sheet of paper with some kind of accounts written down, and there was a problem with it, and she was about to talk with uh, Sabrina and say, you know, there's a, there's a whole problem. Uh, that sheet of paper, obviously, should now be nowhere in sight, okay, so... Because obviously she doesn't want to, she doesn't want Mizuki to see that. Um, so I noticed her, you know, hands were empty um, of the uh, paper from the ledger. Uh, Sabrina winked at me. Uh, okay, whatever. Like Sabrina sort of like goes, yeah, I know what happened to it. Um, Okay, uh, so let's set the scene again in our minds. So what's what's this next paragraph now got to be? Um, oh, you know what would be funny? Um, and again, this is very in keeping with our main character, our protagonist. We're trying to see the world through his eyes. He's lying in a hospital bed. He's a guy. He's lying in a hospital bed. He has these three women standing, you know, sort of at the foot of his bed. Um, he's slightly woozy, unconscious from just having woken up. Um, Let's try something like this, and you guys tell me whether this kind of works. Um, at the three women um, clustered at the whatever the foot of my bed, wondering if uh, you know I was still unconscious, you know. Um, but no, this wasn't a dream. Um, so we've got, this is, uh, that, actually that's a good line, um, one second. So we have two, we have twins and we have his ex-wife. Um, so I'm thinking we say something like this, they'd have, uh, they'd have been triplets in that case. Now remember, we're not, we're not writing a smut book here, guys, but, um, I think there is a small joke we can put here. Um, something like that. Um, you know, I stared at the three women clustered at the foot of my bed, wondering if I was still unconscious. But no, this wasn't a dream. They'd have been triplets in that case, and they'd have been a lot nicer to me. You're right, and we just... We get it. We get it, but we don't want to be explicit. This isn't that kind of book. Um, it's not my style. So, um, now I think Mizuki probably now says, she, so she's she's greeted her sister. Now it's time for her focus to shift to the other two characters. Um, okay, so let's say hello, Crafty Rabbit. Um, said Mizuki. And the, again, it's important that we use what's come before 
So we've had this whole thing, you know, rabbits have been popping up everywhere. Um, Kyori Matsumoto called our protagonist, she called Sharp uh, a rabbit at the beginning in chapter one. She said, I need you to be my rabbit. And we had that, that whole subtext before. Um, okay, so that was quite the fight. All right, remember, uh, when Sh Sharp tried to get out of his fight, he tried to, um, you know, pull some dirty tactics by saying, oh, yeah, Mizuki is, uh, you know, go and ask Mizuki. She'll vouch for me that I have enough money to... There was that whole thing with that, right? I'm not going to go through it now. Um, but, guys, you can check that out uh, if you haven't seen it, if you're not up to date um, in the past videos. Um... Now, Mizuki runs her own dojo, so I think she's... Right, so in, she was impressed with the way that Sharp handled himself in the fight. Um, I think I'll, you know, make a lesson out of it. My students would do well to learn. Um, so we've been talking about dialogue and what to write. What, what are the kind of things that you should definitely be writing when you are... Um, when you have a scene that has dialogue. Um, that's been a question that, you know, people have been asking me and a lot of times that you guys want me to read your dialogue um, and uh, and give my opinion on it. Um, I think, look, I'm no expert at it. I've got, it's one of the hardest things that I find to write. Um, but I think there are pretty much three main, uh, maybe four rules or, or things to keep in mind. Number one is generally try and keep it short, the dialogue. Uh, unless you have a character that just loves to talk, in which case, do that. Um, but generally, the, uh, the the approach is this. You, you, you zoom in, you focus in on one part of the conversation, the most interesting part, and everything else is just, you just say it in prose. So, for example, uh, you know, uh, there's no hello, how are you? There's just, we greeted each other, and about three minutes later... Um, she brought up the convers she brought up the fact that um, you know sh why are you cheating on your on your wife right we just go straight into the the main the meat uh, and then you zoom out again right so that's the that's that's what you should write and uh, and how you should write it is um, all in subtext so the main everything should be as much subtext as possible that's how that's what should go into your dialogue so as we see here you know, Mizuki clearly knows um, that, you know, things are going on behind the scenes between two characters, but she's not saying it explicitly. She's just sort of, by the way that she is uh, talking to everyone, she uh, she tells us, the reader, and them, the characters, that, you know, I know what's going on, and you guys are, you're, you guys are all screwed. Um, okay, that, and let's say having... Uh, if I'm not making sense, guys, do tell me. I mean, it's early in the morning here, so I've just got up. Um, high places. To bail you out. Uh, okay. Um, followed ice to Sabrina. So I think what happened, uh, and we did say this, um, you know, a few uh, few days. See you, Sage. Uh, great to have you here. Um, yeah, I think Sabrina is the one who bailed our character out um, of of the fight. Because um, remember, he did he he pulled a few dirty tricks, but ultimately he got you know thrown unconscious by his opponent. I think Sabrina is the one who sort of said, you know, as soon as he fell unconscious, she was like, whoa, 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 stop the fight, bring him over to me. Um, And obviously our guy, he is not going to be happy with that because he doesn't like his ex-wife at all. He doesn't want to owe her anything. Mm, that's just whatever, bad habits. Uh, whoa, bad habits, I guess. Okay, um, whatever, I mean, that that's... Not the best dialogue in the world, but um, it gets the point across. Okay, uh, 
So this shipping container is full of uh, fighters lying in, uh, lying in various states of consciousness, and you know our guy and Sharp was one of them. And now all these, um, you know, yakuza captains are sort of coming in uh, one at a time. It seems. So you can imagine that everyone else in the shipping container is sort of looking on, going, "What the hell is going on here?" Um, so let's make reference of that. Um, Okay, the entire shipping container uh, had gone quiet. Even the uh, fighters, let's say. Okay, yeah, even the fighters um, would be, uh, you know, groaning in pain. And now silently watching the proceedings. Uh, around my bed. Okay. Now let's get to the meat of this uh, conversation. So what is it you want, um, Mizuki? Uh, okay. Okay, whatever. What is it you want, Mizuki? Um... Not I. Um, we can do this instead of said Mizuki. Let's just say Mizuki um, gestured uh, to the entrance of the container. Uh, the crowd, dear sister. Hmm. Okay, it is time for us to air our dispute. So we remember that these two sisters, um, they're both captains of the Yakuza. They're, they're both Yakuza captains. And um, they have uh, been found to be, uh, you know, try, uh, trying to kill each other, basically. They're, and the superiors of the Yakuza uh, they said, no, 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 no. Two, two captains cannot fight each other within the Yakuza because that's bad for business. So you two will settle the dispute uh, in mortal combat, essentially. Um, and you will do that at this, um, this sort of underground tournament that is, that is going on in the, uh, in the port of Tokyo. Um, so perhaps... Um, you know, perhaps we just uh, cut straight to that. That's the most important. That's the most sort of fun scene to to write. We like we like a good fight scene. Um, okay, we've <clears throat> basically written the page for today. So let's read it through and see um, see what happens. Um, in fact, let's let's just <clears throat> read through from here, uh, just one page back to see if this is all making sense. I think we said yesterday we do want to um, actually uh, put in a little bit more information than we had, especially as to the deal that's going on between Mizuki and Kyorimats uh, um, Kyori Matsumoto and Sabrina. Um, we want to know what's going on with those accounts, that that piece of paper with uh, from the accountant's book. Um, so, okay, let's read it through and see, see how these two pages are, are reading. Um, the normally stone-cold face of the 18th captain of the Yakuza was red hot with anger as she approached my bed. She was wearing the same black business suit I'd seen her in at the captain's meeting. Everything fitted perfectly around her tight physique. She held a piece of paper in her right hand. Her two bodyguards trailed her at a distance of 10 feet. She seemed to pause slightly as she reached my bed as if waiting for us to stand up out of respect, which neither of us did because my ribs were broken and my ex-wife was a bitch. This is not what we talked about, said Kyori, holding out the piece of paper. It was a page from an accountant, from an accounting ledger. I'd worked for enough crooked shysters to recognize the distinct ruled margins. Two of the entries had been circled, presumably the reason why the page had been ripped out of the ledger. Sabrina looked at the page for maybe half a second with an amused expression. You did well at the meeting. I lied, said Kyori. 
I will not lie again. Sabrina shrugged. That's up to you, Kay. But relax. I don't think it'll be necessary in any case. Kyori's hand tightened on the page, causing it to crease and quiver. We don't need from the ledger. Um, on the paper. Okay. Kyori's hand tightened on the paper, causing it to crease and quiver. I doubted she was used to being told to relax, and certainly not to being called K. But as much as I might have wanted to see that wry smile get slapped off Sabrina's face, I was at my wit's end, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. You're in business together? I said. And since when do you speak Japanese? The two women turned to me. Kyori Matsumoto could have been looking at a lump of stale bread. Sabrina wiggled my foot as if cooing a child. Me and Kay are a lot of things together. Seriously, Ollie, you should see her at the poker table. And with my look at craps, well, Monte Carlo didn't know what hit them. I turned to Kyori. Is she really a captain? Kyori Matsumoto said nothing. I guess you really do have a tanuki problem, I said. At which point there was another commotion as Mizuki Matsumoto, the seventh captain of the Yakuza, walked into the shipping container. So, okay, this, this part needs, it seems to need a little bit of refining. It doesn't read as uh, quite as well. Okay. So it's true, said Mizuki. My sister, the girl who would pull a face every time our father would cough, is hanging out in the medical tents. She wore her black kimono with the wolf head insignia. She had no bodyguards with her, yet she strode past the two guys who Kyori had brought without giving them any notice. Forgive me, my lords, she said. It appears I am late to another meeting. Uh, it appears that I am late to another meeting. If someone would like to catch me upon the subject at hand. She offered us a small grin, but if there was some kind of joke in there, I didn't get it. Kyori Matsumoto didn't look amused either. She, so she stood squarely to her twin sister, albeit about three inches taller due to her heels. I noticed her hands were empty of the paper from the ledger. Sabrina winked at me. I stared at the three women clustered at the foot of my bed, wondering if I was still unconscious, but no, this wasn't a dream. They'd have been triplets in that case, and they'd have been a lot nicer to me. Hello, crafty rabbit, said Mizuki. That was quite the fight. In fact, I think I'll make a lesson out of it. My students would do well to learn the art of misdirection. That and having friends in high places to bail you out. I followed her eyes to Sabrina. You saved me, I said. Sabrina shrugged. Bad habits, I guess. The entire shipping container had gone quiet. Even the fighters who had been groaning in pain were now silently watching the proceedings around my bed. Kyori Matsumoto broke the silence. What is it you want, Mizuki? Not I. Mizuki gestured to the entrance of the container. The crowd, dear sister. It is time for us to air our dispute. Okay, I mean, it moves very quickly. Um, it, it, I mean, it works. I think there's just... Um, and this is clearly the end of, uh, you know, if not a chapter break, you know, middle of the chapter, you know, one of the stars... It's, it's definitely the end of a chapter because we're about to now go and see these two sisters show down. Um, but I think we perhaps need... Um, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? I think, you know, we, we understand that um, Sabrina and Kyori have a relationship. They've built some kind of relationship and they are somehow colluding... Uh, either just against Mizuki or against the Yakuza as a whole, or perhaps even something completely different. Um, something is going on. Um, and, and this is, you know, pretty much what we said. Chapter 7 is going to have to be uh, about. So, okay. I mean, we've got work to do. Um, but we did, we, we wrote a page. We did write another page today, so that's pretty good. Um... Yeah, tomorrow we're just going to have to drill in a bit deeper. The, I think, look, the point is always keep going forward, right? Um, try not to look back. We'll look back when we do the, uh, when we do the edit. Um, or, you know, once we finish the first draft, we'll go back. We'll probably have a better idea of what's going on. Uh, but so far, I mean, it, it's, it's 
it's reading, right? You can read it and we, we kind of understand what's going on. So, um, yeah, happy with that. Um, okay, great to have you guys um, in the chat. Uh, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, please do, if you have been, you know, if you're just tuning in for the first time over the, you know, today, if you're just tuning in for the first time yesterday, uh, please do uh, go back if you'd like and uh, catch up on the story that we've been writing. Uh, all the videos are available, especially on the YouTube channel. Um, you've got everything there. So uh, please do like and subscribe both to YouTube and uh, follow along on Twitter, uh, on on Twitter, on, uh, on Twitch. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow where I will continue to write before your eyes. I'm <laughs> sorry.